Hey, and welcome to Online Worship. My name is Fernie, and I'm the pastor here at Mid-City Church. I am so glad you are worshiping with us. This week is a very important week for us as we launch our uh, Sunday morning service. And so uh, we, we're just so excited. We've been praying about this for months now, and, and I hope that uh, as we worship today, I hope that you may encounter God. I hope that you will catch a glimpse of heaven do, uh, through our time together today. I hope that by the time we're done worshiping, you can say with full assurance that you have been in the presence of God and you have been changed by it. And so I want to invite you to do two things before we enter into worship. The first, I want to invite you to text the word here to the number 225-307-0662. You'll see that on your screen. And, and I want you to, you're going to get three links. One will be to a, a connect card. Uh, we want to know who worshiped with us, so take a moment to fill that out. Another one is through a prayer request card. Uh, we want to be able to, to pray for you and with you. And the third one is to a giving tab. You'll hear a little bit more about that later in the service. So uh, do that. That's the first thing I want to do. The, the second thing I want to invite you to do is to enter into worship today with intentionality. Sing with us. Pray with us. Uh, read scripture with us. Uh, be intentional about our gathering today. And I, I, I'm convinced that if, if we enter into worship with intentionality, we will encounter God.
God in prayer. Lord, we welcome you in this place. We thank you for your presence here. Lord, we ask right now that you just move in our hearts. Renew us as we worship you. Cleanse us as we worship you. moment. Draw us close to you, God. We want to lift these praises to you, lift these words to you. Like this next song says, we want to raise a hallelujah. No matter what we're going through right now, God, right now we're just going to lay it at your feet. We're going to give it all to you. We're going to give you praise, you honor, you adoration. So God, right now, receive it. Right now, we're going to put away any and all distractions, Lord, and we're just going to focus on you.
at Mid City Church, one of the spiritual disciplines that uh, we take very seriously, that, that's a, a part of who we are, is the spiritual practice of generosity. It's an opportunity for us to uh, let go of, our, uh, of what we have, of what God has given us. And it's also an opportunity for us to, to be able to trust God with more and more of our lives. And one of the ways we can do that is through uh, our offering. And so today, as we do our offering, I want to invite you to uh, consider giving. I want to invite you, the way you can do that is you'll text the letters MCCBR to 22525. And, and what I want you to do, here's, here's my challenge for us today. My challenge is that you will consider giving at least a dollar, that uh, it can be the beginning of this spiritual practice where, where you can begin to look at your life and say, okay, where are the places that I'm holding on really tightly? And, and we can begin to pray to God to help us let go of that, uh, of those places we're holding on so tightly to say, God, I'm holding on tight because uh, I don't trust that things will be okay. And and as we begin to loosen our grip, we can begin to say, God, you are a God who I can trust. And so I know right now there's a lot of uncertainty, but I want to invite you to consider, to pray about um, doing this this, um, practice with us today. So again, you'll text the letters MCCBR to the number 22525. Let us go to God in prayer as we bless this offering. God, I give you thanks. God, may this offering be used to may it be used to spread your love, your grace, your mercy. But God, may it be also used to help us learn to trust you with more and more of our lives. God, it's so easy in, in times like these to just hold on tight to think that if we just hold on tight, we can control everything and life is going to be okay. But there is something so freeing about letting go and trusting you. So God, I pray today as we uh, give this offering to you, that it may be an opportunity for us to begin to let go of that grip just a little bit. God bless this offering. We give you thanks. Amen.
So I'm so excited for worship this week. Uh, since we had to launch online worship, we have been dreaming and praying about launching a second online service, and this week is a culmination of that, and so I am so excited for worship this week. I want to share a story with you that I haven't really shared with a lot of people. It's a story that's really uh, dear to my heart. You know, for about a year, uh, I spent time in Mid-City in different coffee shops, getting to know different neighbors and, and just people in the neighborhood. And, and through that process, my prayer to God every week was, God, what is your vision for Mid-City Church? What is it that you want Mid-City Church to do? And who is it that you want Mid-City Church to be? And so I prayed over and over and over and over again. And, and I, I swear for the longest time, I thought God was never going to give us that vision, that we were never going to be able to see who God was calling us to be. And, and one day when I was at, I was at Brouhaha, uh, my typical Thursday morning routine was to go to Brouhaha, get a cup of coffee, get one of those breakfast skillets, and, and just read my Bible for hours. And I remember uh, sitting there one morning, and I was reading through the book of Acts, and all of a sudden I felt this assurance in my heart that God had placed a vision for us. And so uh, today, as we, uh, this week really, as we launch our second online service, I, I was thinking we should go back to the basics essentially and, and talk about who we are and talk about that vision that God placed in, in our hearts to, to, uh, so that we can continue to be who God has called us to be. And so let me share that vision that uh, God placed in my heart that morning. I felt God say to me that we're being called to be a multiplying, kingdom-diverse church that brings about spiritual healing to our community. A multiplying, kingdom-diverse church that brings about spiritual healing to our community. Now, I know there's a lot in that sentence, so let's unpack it a little bit. And I want to start by looking at the word multiplying. You know, at the time, uh, the, let me give you the, the setting, kind of where we were when we were praying about launching Mid-City Church. Churches were dying. Less and less people were going to churches. More and more people considered themselves, themselves nuns as far as they have no uh, religious affiliation. And, and churches left and right were closing their doors because there wasn't enough people coming in. Well, you fast forward a little bit. We had this global pandemic. And even more so now than before, churches are still closing their doors. People weren't showing up. Now we have a global pandemic. And uh, we have a, an economy that's struggling and churches are closing even faster. On paper, this is the worst possible time to launch a church. But even back then, God was saying, hold on. Rest assured that I can launch a church, that I can multiply a church even in the worst possible setting, in the worst possible time. You see, I have this hunch that, that God knew what we were going to go through, that I, I, you know, if I'm honest with you, there's been days when I've thought, is this worth it? Do we, should we really launch a church in the middle of everything that's happening? And, and I keep going back to this vision that God placed in our hearts, and I'm reminded, yes, it is worth it, because God can, can do so many things, including grow a church in the midst of a pandemic in the midst of a season when people just aren't going to church. So we have this vision that we're going to be a multiplying church because we trust that God will uh, help us share our faith with other people and help this church grow. It's a faith statement. So we're a multiplying church, and we're also a kingdom diverse church. Revelation chapter 7 says that a, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation and language gathered at the throne of God to worship him. John, the author of Revelation, gives us this picture. And, and just, just picture it with me for a second. There is this vast uh, multitude of people, people uh, more than he can count from every language, from every nation, from uh, every corner of the earth is gathered in that worship room, worshiping God. God. See, I believe that the kingdom of God is diverse. And I think that what, what John saw in that vision was this diverse picture of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is diverse, more diverse than we can even begin to imagine. The, the kingdom of God is more diverse than even our wildest imagination. The kingdom of God is diverse. And, and I think God has called us to be a church that reflects the diversity of the kingdom of God. Because you see, as Christians, we can't pray the Lord's Prayer and say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, if we don't embrace the fact that the kingdom of God is diverse. 
When we say thy kingdom come, we mean let, let that uh, diverse kingdom of God be not just in heaven, but here, present today. At Mid-City Church, we have been called to be a church that embraces that diversity, that lives that diversity out, that helps bring that diversity here on earth as it is in heaven. So we're a multiplying church. We're a, a church that reflects the diversity of the kingdom of God. And we help bring about spiritual healing. I think this one's so important. Because my guess is that many of you who are watching online, uh, maybe you have experienced some pain or hurt caused by the church. Maybe some of you have been told that God doesn't want to have a relationship with you because simply who you are. Maybe some of you have been told you've made too many mistakes that, that you need to fix yourself before God will want anything to do with you or before you can play a role in the kingdom of God. There has been a lot of pain between people and the church. And I think as a church, we're being called to help uh, spread this uh, message that God loves us, that God is a God of grace, that God is a God who is relevant, who can make a difference in our lives. You see, I think the way we bring about spiritual healing is by reminding people that they're loved by God and they're loved by the church. And so we have this vision at Mid-City Church that we're gonna be a, a multiplying, kingdom-diverse church that brings about spiritual healing. And I, I've got to be honest with you, that morning as I was sitting at Bruhaha and this vision rested in my heart, the first thing I said to God was, that's not possible. That's too big of a vision, God. Can a church, can one church really do all that? And as I kept reading my scriptures, I was convicted by God that morning. And so I want to share that conviction with you. This, this scripture reading comes from the book of Acts verses 26 through 38. It says that an angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go to the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what, I, uh, what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now, the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb silent before its shear, so he does not open its mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. And they were going along the road. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. As I was reading through this text, I felt convicted because I think if we pay close attention to this story, we can see that oh, this vision that God has placed over us for Mid-City Church, it's coming to life in this text. See, for starters, I think we get a glimpse of uh, multiplication in this text. Many historians believe that this eunuch that Philip encounters and, and baptizes, that he is responsible for going back to Ethiopia and, and growing this movement there. Many historians would argue that it is this eunuch that Philip encounters, whom he shares the good news of Jesus with that goes back to Ethiopia and creates a whole movement there. See, Philip shows up, shares the good news of Jesus, and multiplication happens. This, grow, this, this church movement begins to grow in ways that some of the early disciples never even imagined could have happened. 
in this text, we see multiplication happening. On top of that, we see a glimpse of diversity. You see that the Ethiopian was, was not Jewish. In fact, if, if, if we're honest, the, the early movement, well, if you read through the whole Bible, right, it's, it's, it's the Jewish people. This eunuch is not Jewish. He was an outsider. He was not one of the ones that, uh, in their minds, Jesus had come to uh, rescue and and had had come to share the good news with. But Philip, Philip knows that the kingdom of God is more diverse than just the Jewish people, more than just the Samaritans. He shares the good news with this Ethiopian. He understands that the kingdom of God is more diverse than everybody else might think it is at this time. See, we get a glimpse of multiplication. We get a glimpse of diversity. And I think we also get a glimpse of what it looks like for someone to experience spiritual healing. You see, this eunuch has a very interesting story. We find out in the text that he had gone to the temple. He had gone to Jerusalem to worship God. But, but, but here's the thing. He didn't really get to go into the temple. He didn't really get to worship God with everybody else because he's a eunuch. Deuteronomy chapter 23 gives us all the rules as to who can and cannot enter into the temple. And eunuchs are not allowed to enter. Somehow this eunuch knows about God and he wants to know more about God, but he has to learn from a distance. He can get close to the temple, but he can't go inside. He has to eavesdrop on the Bible studies. He has to eavesdrop on the sermons. He has to eavesdrop on, this, on the conversations about scripture and about God. He, he can learn and he can give his life to God, but it has to be from a distance because that's what the law says. Many people have been told that they have to stay away from the church, from God. Many people have been told and made to believe that God doesn't love them unless they get their act together, unless they make different decisions. See, I don't think that that is who God is. I think God is a God who loves all people and wants to be in relationship with all people. And I think Philip understands that because when he goes to the eunuch and the eunuch says to him, what is keeping me from being baptized? That the answer is nothing. Nothing is keeping him from being baptized. And so they stop and, and this eunuch gets baptized. See, when we're a church that brings about spiritual healing, we begin to see more stories like this. More stories who've, of people who've been told that God wants nothing to do with them, and then they find out, actually, God wants everything to do with them. You see, I was convicted as I read this text because my argument with God was, God, this vision is too big for one church to accomplish. And then God said to me, if one person can do this, imagine what a whole church can do. If one person can do this much change, imagine what a whole church can do. And so today, this week, as we launch uh, two services, two of services officially, a Thursday and Sunday morning service, uh, I want to I wanna invite you to be a part of that vision. I want to invite you to be a part of Mid-City Church and help bring that vision to life. Come and be a part of this movement. Keep joining us for worship and, and keep joining our small groups as we start uh, service opportunities. Come and join us as we serve our community Come and be a part of this vision, but, but I have a challenge for you. See, I think that uh, this vision is a beautiful vision that God has placed upon us, and I think if the church gets together, it can accomplish very uh, beautiful and amazing things, but I think this vision can also be derailed very easily. Just as one person can make so much change, one person can also derail it very easily. Imagine if Philip had not gone to the eunuch. Imagine if Philip had said, yeah, he's not Jewish. Imagine if Philip had said, I don't know that you deserve to be baptized because the law says this. Beloved, I want to invite you to be a part of this vision. Be a part of this church and help us 
uh, be who God has called us to be. Gather with us in worship, grow with us in small groups, give your life in service with us because I believe, I truly believe that together we can bring about change to our community in ways that we can't even begin to imagine. Will you be a part of this movement? Will you be a part of this church? Will you be a part of what God is doing here? Let us pray. Gracious loving God, I give you thanks. God, challenge us, nudge us, push us. God, may we be not only a people, but a church that trusts that you can grow and multiply a church even in the hardest time, that believes wholeheartedly that the kingdom of God is diverse, that will do anything to ensure that people know that you are a God of grace and love. God, nudge us, challenge us to be the church so that, so that we may live into this vision that you have placed in our heart. God, we don't want to be a church that just uh, sits and receives we don't want to be the kind of church that just sits and listens to sermons and listens to music and, and goes home and nothing changes. God, we want you to enter into our lives in such a way that we can't help but share that with the world around us. And God, we want to share that with the world around us because we want uh, the world to know who you are. God, if you can grow a church in the midst of a pandemic, you can, that, that just means that you can get us through our depression and our anxiety. It means that you can get us through the, the mountains that we face in our lives. If, if you can grow a church, if you can multiply a church in a pandemic, God, you can do so much more than just that. Help us trust that. God, if the kingdom of God is more diverse than we can even begin to imagine, help us embrace that diversity here and now. Remind us that that's not something we have to wait for, for the future or someday in the, in the future, but that's something that we can embrace here and now because we pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And God, help us be the church that brings hope and grace to people. God, I pray that Mid City Church can be the place where people come and they can be reminded that they are beloved children of God. That no matter what we've done, who we are, no, no, nothing can ever change the fact that we are beloved children of God. God, help us be that church. Nudge us and challenge us to be that church. God, I pray all this in your most precious and most glorious name. Amen. for my
I'm so glad you joined us today. I hope that uh, you were challenged to be a part of this uh, movement of what God is doing here. You know, I've got to tell you, uh, I want to add one more thing to to my sermon for today. Uh, I think it's one thing to be active, to be engaged in the vision that God has placed on our hearts, but, but I want to invite you to take it a step further. Don't just show up to worship. Don't just show up to small groups. Don't just show up to serve. Invite people to come with you. Invite people on this journey with you. Invite people to worship. You can start watch par- a watch party next week. You can uh, tag friends on the comment section so they can go in and listen to uh, today's worship service. Uh, I want to invite you to invite people to be a part of this experience. I think one of the things that Philip does is if you continue to read the stories, he continues to invite people into ministry with him. And not only do I want to invite you to be in ministry with us, but I want you to invite your friends, your neighbors, your loved ones to be a part of this ministry. Thank you for joining us today. Go forth in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.